On March 22, 2023, Green Suiji set a new world record in Super Mario 64's 16 star with a time of 14 minutes and 35.5 seconds. To get a sense of how historic this speedrun is, here are the top 130 runners of 16 star. Tons of competition at the top level, with runners inching out each other by fractions of a second, aside from a gap near the 15 minute mark. And then there's Suiji, sitting on another planet. Dozens of speedrunners, including Suiji himself, have called this speedrun perfect. But what does that mean? What sets this run so far ahead of everyone else, and is it really perfect? This is the Super Mario 64 16 star world record explained. This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. The way it works is pretty simple. By connecting to the internet through a VPN, you can choose an IP address from anywhere around the world and data exchanged through that connection is encrypted. But why is changing your IP address good? TV shows and movies are often region locked. ISPs throttle your download and upload speeds if you're using more bandwidth than they'd like you to be using. Online businesses often have different pricings for different countries. Those limits are based on your public IP address. By changing that address, you can bypass region locking and throttling and get deals that can easily save you more than the monthly subscription. Your VPN pays for itself. The encryption of your data is something you don't know you need until you wish you did. If you ever use free public Wi-Fi networks, you're putting your passwords at risk no matter how secure the website you're using is. Surfshark closes that loophole by encrypting your sensitive data before it's sent through the public network. The best way to find out if it's good for you is to try it right now at no risk thanks to Surfshark's 30-day money-back guarantee. Make sure to use the promo code BISMITH for an extra 3 months for free. The link is in the description below. Let's get this spoiler out of the way. This speedrun is not literally perfect. It will become very clear very quickly though that this is an unfathomably clean run. If you think the mistakes I'm pointing out from it are ridiculous, that's because they are. This video will break down the run star by star for the most part. I will let part of the run play out, then explain everything there is to understand about it. What tricks and glitches were used and how they work, how much time Suiji lost, if any, and what faster strategies exist that could save more time. Also, as always, check out the additional notes linked in the video description. It's me, Mario. But first, a quick look into the category and the route taken through the game. 16 Star is meant to be a run that's approachable to newcomers and generally considered more enjoyable to play than the true any percent speedrun of this game, Zero Star. The problem with Zero and even One Star is that they require a trick that's so prohibitively difficult that very few people even complete a run, let alone try to optimize it. As a result, 16 Star is over 12 times more popular than Zero Star. But being an easy version of any percent doesn't preclude it from including hard tricks and optimizations, so the category is still competitive at the highest level and its world record is held in high regard. So why 16 stars? Well, the run does skip every star door, 8, 30, 50, and 70. However, without the SBLJ to skip the 30 star door, the next best thing is using Mips the Rabbit to push Mario through the door. Mips only appears once Mario has 15 stars. The second Bowser stage is initially blocked by Dire Dire Docks until the star Bored Bowser sub is collected, which brings the star count to 16. In this run, Suiji also skips the 8 star door. Aside from Worm's Fortress, the levels accessible from the main lobby tend to have stars that are slower to collect than the basement levels. Getting the basement key early allows the star distribution to skew in favor of the basement, saving roughly 40 seconds. First, Suiji gets the basement key in the red coin star from Bowser in the Dark World, then he gets 3 stars from Worm's Fortress before heading to the basement to get the rest. 3 stars from Shifting Sand Land, 4 from Lethal Lava Land, 3 from Hazy Maze Cave, and 1 from Toad bring his count to 15 to make Bips appear. Afterwards, it's just a matter of getting the key to upstairs, then skipping the other star doors to finish the game. Yeah, thanks for the good luck, Pumba and Botak. Yeah, like everything in this game is harder than it looks, really. <laughs> 10 seconds in and I have to step in. This is Lakitu Skip, one of the most well-known tricks in the game. Lakitu normally speaks to Mario at the start of the game, which is controlled by a large trigger area that spans the entire bridge, except for a tiny sliver on each side. If Mario only steps on the extreme edge of the bridge, Lakitu never swoops in for a chat. To get an idea of how thin this is, we need a sense of scale. One unit of length in this game is roughly on the scale of 1 centimeter. Mario is a cylinder, 74 units wide and 160 units tall. The part of the bridge where he can stand without speaking to Lakitu is 10 units wide. 
So it's pretty precise, but with enough practice, this trick is surprisingly easy and consistent, even for beginner speedrunners. By the way, speed is also measured using the same unit of length. One unit of speed is one unit of length per frame. This game runs at 30 frames per second, so one frame is 1 30th of a second. Mario's base running speed is around 32 units per frame, but it gets up to 48 while long jumping or diving. Try to keep this scale in mind as I talk about units of length and speed during this video. This is the first big trick of the run, the 8 star door skip, also called the lobby backwards long jump. The trick begins with Mario jumping right through a ceiling. This can happen because the lobby's pillars have a bit of floor under them that's normally inaccessible. The floor happens to come very close to the ceiling below, so close in fact that by jumping into the right spot, Mario can grab onto the floor like he can on any ledge. When Mario is holding onto a ledge like this, his apparent position is disjointed from his actual position. Even though he looks like he's hanging down, his hitbox is actually the same as if he were standing. Therefore, the instant that Mario grabs onto the ledge, his position snaps onto the floor above, allowing him to go right through the ceiling. This is backwards long jumping, or BLJ for short. A long jump multiplies Mario's speed by 1.5 up to a cap, 48 speed forwards and 16 speed backwards. But while the forward speed is hard capped, the backward speed is only soft capped. In other words, if a long jump were to give Mario more than 48 speed, it will be fixed to 48. Meanwhile, his negative speed can go beyond 16, but it'll gradually come back down to 16. This usually isn't a problem, because Mario decelerates quickly enough that it goes back to negative 16 very quickly after jumping. However, if Mario is in a position where he can jump repeatedly fast enough, he can increase his speed exponentially until it reaches thousands or even more. The geometry of this area allows him to do just that. Once Mario is here, this diagonal side has no wall. Some of it is bordered by the hitbox of the ceiling below and some of it is bordered by out of bounds. It's quite precise to do this without being pushed back out, but it is possible to have Mario long jump and reverse into the ceiling. With his back against the ceiling, he's prevented from moving into it and his vertical speed is zeroed out, so he lands immediately. As soon as he lands, he can long jump again and repeat this process. But while his vertical speed is set to zero by the ceiling, his horizontal speed is preserved so he can grow it exponentially. After only 14 jumps, his speed is on the order of about 1000. Mario then shoots out of this spot and into the black room behind the door. This room is simply there for the cutscenes when Mario is coming in and out of the castle. It has just a bit of floor and no walls, everything beyond it is out of bounds. After completing a 180 degree turn, he zooms across the hall and up the stairs and passes right through the 8 star door. The reason Mario can clip through walls and doors at this speed is quite simple, he's just moving that fast. Mario is in front of the wall, then completely beyond it on the next frame. Wall hitboxes are 100 units thick, but Mario actually needs 4 times that speed to get through. To improve its accuracy with collision detection, when calculating Mario's movement, the game splits each frame into 4 equal parts called quarter steps. Since to get through a wall, Mario needs to be in front of it on one quarter step and beyond it on the next, it requires a speed of at least 400 units per frame. By the way, this is a gross oversimplification, the actual walls in this area look like this. To get up the stairs, he needs to slow down a bit. Mario's speed up a slope is limited by how much he can move and still be within the floor hitbox of that slope. With too much speed, he tries to move into the ceiling below instead and gets stuck until his speed comes down. Thankfully, jumping instantly bring his speed down by 20%. The jump gets nowhere because the height of a jump is indirectly proportional to Mario's speed, so with a high enough negative speed, the jump gets negative height and Mario lands on the next frame. Finally, he can get up the stairs, through the 8-star door and into the Bowser stage. The LBLJ is a very hard trick that requires a precise position for the initial long jump. Then, an accurate BLJ that gives Mario just enough speed to clip through walls but not so much as to clip back out and ruin the whole thing. Then, quickly turning around and aiming for the lobby stairs while controlling the speed to go up the staircase. Finally, redirecting his speed towards the 8 star door and phasing through it, all in a few seconds. Suiji lost roughly half a second in this segment. When he turned around behind the door, he spent a few frames unable to turn. When the trapdoor opened, Mario moved to the side, which is slower. Standing in the middle lets Mario be carried down with the trapdoor and being on the side forces him to slide down into the level entrance instead. 
Finally, there is a faster strategy for the lobby BLJ where Mario turns around much faster behind the door which could save another half a second or so, but it's very inconsistent. The start of this run is hard enough as it is, and making it that much worse for half a second just isn't worth it. So that's just how it goes. This level doesn't have one single trick to it. It's more of a constant stream of absurdly precise movement where one mistake ends the run. Less than 15% of all of Suiji's attempts even make it past the first Bowser. But while it mostly boils down to clean execution, there are two things I need to point out. First, the wall kick to this red coin works out because the outside wall pushes Mario before the ceiling can stop his upwards momentum. On this frame, Mario is just under the ceiling hitbox. On the next frame, after one quarter step, Mario finds himself both in the ceiling and in the wall at the same time. When processing collisions, the game always goes in this order, walls, floors, then ceilings. The wall hitbox is processed first, which pushes Mario out. At this point, he's no longer inside of the ceiling, so the collision with the ceiling is ignored. This requires a precise side flip. With slightly different height spacing, Mario isn't so lucky and ends up missing the wall hitbox, instead getting stuck under the ceiling. The second thing to point out is these wall kicks. A wall kick has two parts. First, Mario bonks on the wall, losing all his speed. Then, if A is pressed within a 5 frame window, he jumps, automatically gaining 24 speed in the direction reflecting off the wall. But if A is pressed on the first possible frame of the wall kick window, Mario doesn't have time to lose all of his speed and he kicks off the wall with the same speed he had previously. This is what Suiji does. He long jumps into the wall, then gets two first frame wall kicks to preserve his high speed as he climbs up. There's one very small time loss in this stage. When he jumped into the pipe, Suiji held A slightly too long and spent more time in the air than he needed. This lost him roughly 0.2 seconds. There isn't any significantly faster strategy that could reasonably be used in this level. or 241.9. Any guessers? I think it's 241.9. for the good luck glitch. After getting the key, Suiji is trapped in this hallway, but thankfully you can pause and exit out of levels to go back to the castle's main lobby. He did it so quickly the menu never even appears, but he paused and scrolled down to exit course. Uh, I don't know if I should go for long jump or not. But surely it works now, right? Here we go! No, fuck that. What just happened there? This is another flagship trick, cannonless. It turns out that the breakable piece doesn't complete the wall seamlessly. Its bottom corner is misplaced by one unit vertically. This creates a gap fractions of a unit wide between the solid wall and the breakable wall, which in turn allows Mario to grab the ledge. In short, to check if Mario should be able to grab a ledge, the game checks for a wall in two places. Mario can only grab a ledge if the game detects a wall on the lower check, but not on the higher check. This is what happens here. The higher check lands exactly in that ridiculously small gap in the wall, so Mario hangs onto the slanted floor. As soon as he does, his hitbox touches the star for one frame before the wall pushes him out, which is enough to collect it. 
Remember from the ledge grab through the ceiling, from the instant Mario grabs a ledge, his hitbox sits on top of that ledge. Once Mario is in the Star Dance animation, he can never fall. If for some reason he's no longer standing on the floor, he snaps down to the floor below instead. This is why he appears at the bottom of the wall after being pushed out. Also, the music suddenly stopping isn't directly caused by the odd way Mario grabs the star, it's because of this piranha plant. The lullaby pauses the main level music so it can resume later. However, at the same time, the Star Dance theme plays over the lullaby and stops the main level music completely. When Mario gets pushed out in downwards, what should be the lullaby stops playing, but it stops the Star Dance instead. Since the main level music was stopped, there's no music left to play. From the moment Suiji gets this trick, the run goes from mindlessly going through the motions to a serious attempt. Cannonless eats up half of the attempts that make it to this point. It requires a very precise position that's hard to reach consistently without an exact setup for Mario's speed and angle. Using a long jump instead could save up to 0.7 seconds, but its consistency is closer to about 25%. Normally, to get the star, you are required to do the first two stars in the level, then find the owl in this tree and have it carry you to the cage. Instead, Suiji does a precise double jump wall kick to just barely make it onto the fence. This trick, called Owl-less, is hard but consistent, so top level runners like Suiji have no problem nailing it nearly every time. After every star, Suiji selects the option Continue Don't Save because saving lags the game for 6 frames every time. Since the menu has a 10 frame window where you can move the cursor but not select an option, it doesn't cost any time if it's done fast enough. Not saving is 3.5 seconds faster over the whole run. Oh my god, it's fine, but that's gonna cringe. There are a few things to talk about here. First, this high speed slide kick is frame perfect. The Z press can't be buffered, meaning that it can't be pressed any earlier than on the frame Mario lands. If it's pressed late, Mario's speed is set to 48 instead of staying around 100. After that, Suiji intentionally slides out a bit before recovering to slow down a bit. When Mario hits the big bird, it stops the upwards momentum of his long jump. Coming in too fast to hit the bird means that you don't get as much height on the long jump and you land early on the pyramid. Here, Suiji tried to do a speed kick, but missed. A speed kick works similarly to the slide kick. It can preserve higher speeds than the usual running speed of 32. It's done by pressing B while holding A and with the stick close to neutral. If the stick is held forward, Mario will dive instead, which would be catastrophic here. Suiji pressed B too early, so the kick never came out, which thankfully only lost him about a third of a second. Thanks to Blue for the sub. This trick is known as pillarless because it skips having to stand on top of all four pillars to open the pyramid top. It involves three major glitches, the bloated bob glitch, hands-free holding, and a ground pound clip. When Mario is holding an object, what you see in his hands is actually a visual copy of the object itself. The real object stays where it was grabbed until it's released, remaining loaded regardless of distance but it's made invisible and intangible. This is known as the object being in limbo. bob are different. While they are made invisible, they remain tangible and they follow Mario by hovering in front of him. Why? So that the smoke coming out of them looks like it's coming from the visual copy in Mario's hands. This, however, has a few side effects. Just before it explodes, a bob dramatically increases in size for a few frames. 
When Mario grabs it in that bloated state, the invisible hovering bob bomb is pushing him back. Since it stays just in front of Mario as long as he's holding it, it follows him around, pushing him back continuously. This is the bloated bob bomb glitch. Next is hands-free holding. Here, Mario jump dives to re-grab the bob bomb and lands onto a downward slope. This puts Mario in an unintended state. His action state is no longer defined as holding an object, but he still has a held object attached to him. Therefore, he can perform all sorts of actions that he wouldn't be able to do while holding an object, like double jumping or ground pounding. On top of being pushed backwards by the bob bomb, this is what creates this crazy looking movement. Hands free holding is a volatile state that's very easy to lose because Mario is always trying to drop the object if he can. Therefore, the movement to reach and scale the pyramid is precise and deliberate. Once he reaches the top of the pyramid, he ground pounds completely through the top piece and into the hole. He can do that because in the first part of the ground pound where Mario does a flip, his collision with level geometry is essentially disabled. This allows the bob bomb to push him through the slope. He also lands directly in the tiny hole, which is another impressive bit of execution. Oh my... So slow. Jeez. Suiji is very disappointed here because he lost time to an easily avoidable mistake. He taps A and B in quick succession to select a star as early as possible, but he did it too early here and both button presses missed the input window. He realized his mistake and repressed A but lost a third of a second. Although the star itself went perfectly, he was kicking himself for making that blunder. Overall, shifting sand land went very well. He only lost a third of a second in two different parts. His pillarless was especially flawless. Even though he still had more than half the run to go, less than 4% of all attempts make it out of the stage and he did it on a pace that he had been on less than 20 times ever. This star is quite straightforward, I have nothing to add to it. This is lava boosting. When Mario touches lava, he bounces out quite high. It's possible to hit the lava waterfall at the peak of the first bounce, gaining double the height. Since Mario takes three sectors of damage every time, it can usually only be done twice in a row. It's very easy to accidentally hit the waterfall multiple times, so Suiji has to be extra careful to avoid that. It's actually possible to save 0.4 seconds by conserving momentum gained during the lava boost, but it adds a significant layer of difficulty on top of an already tough star. The jump here is especially precise. If Mario goes any closer, he will grab the pole, losing all his momentum. There's almost zero margin for error. Speaking of errors, there's one right here. When Suiji dove into the volcano, he caught the rim, losing a quarter of a second in the process. This star went flawlessly, but it could be done very slightly faster by clipping through the bridge with a lava bounce. This route only saves about 0.2 seconds though. This works simply because the bridge's only solid part is the floor, both the walls and the underside have no collision. Once Mario gets on top of the wall, he punches before diving. This is because trying to walk off the ledge would cause Mario to hang off it instead. A punch gives Mario a flat 10 speed and since the top of the fence is so narrow, he falls off immediately, allowing him to dive. 
it's about 6 frames faster to do it this way than to jump off. After a near perfect lethal level end, Suiji was now on a pace that he had only ever seen less than 10 times. Going this deep into a run on world record pace is exceedingly rare and by now the nerves building up were starting to make him feel uneasy. But he wasn't out of the woods at all, the worst had yet to come. It looks like him talking to Toad was very slow, but it actually was pretty much perfect. Toad takes a moment to fade in that you have to wait out before you're able to talk to him. Also, it seems like a weird choice to talk to Toad now instead of before or after Hazy May's Cave, but there's a good reason for it. Toad only gives a star if Mario already has at least 12, and Mips only appears if Mario has at least 15 stars when the basement is loaded. Mario only has 11 stars when he comes in, and if Toad were his 15th star, he would exit Hazime's cave with only 14 and Mips wouldn't be there. <laughs> Most of Hazime's cave has no ceiling. If Mario jumps high enough, he can simply go over the walls, so long as what's beyond it isn't out of bounds. With a triple jump on the box, Mario easily clears the wall and ends up directly above the cavern at the bottom of the stage. Suiji actually comes very close to the death plane from the pits in the first room and he has to be careful to avoid it. Dude, come on man. Here, Suiji accidentally lands on the floor instead of jumping cleanly into the level. This cost about the same as the volcano, a quarter of a second. The 15th star of this run uses a very peculiar trick, C-up sliding. When C-up is pressed while Mario is running, he slides to a stop. But if he's on a slope that's steep and slippery enough, the slope will overpower friction, resulting in a net acceleration. Once he's gained enough speed, he cancels his C-up sliding and in quick succession does a speed kick and a double jump, followed by a triple jump. Despite each jump taking 20% off his forward speed, he still has over 50 speed during the triple jump, making this the most efficient way to preserve his momentum that's humanly viable. Could be worse. This is the first staple trick of 16 star, Mips Clip. The way this works is quite simple. When Mario drops an object like Mips, it appears a little bit in front of him. However, that would be out of bounds, so as a failsafe, it's placed directly on top of Mario. Because Mips is colliding with Mario and their position is exactly the same, Mario is pushed out in the same direction that he's facing and he ends up inside the door. You can actually see Mips being out of bounds when its shadow disappears. Once Mario is inside the door, he has to crouch to turn, otherwise he'd open the door instead. Then he can re-grab Mips, clip out on the other side, and keep going. Normally, this is done by jumping out of the door and turning around, but something happened here that's both very rare and very fortunate. Suiji's perfect angle and position allowed Mario to both grab Mips and punch the door frame at the same time. This pushes Mario back and clips him out in a single grab action, saving a full second. This had just promoted the run from once in a thousand to once in a lifetime. At this exact moment, Suiji's heart rate jumped and his focus was absolute. 
He was faster than he had ever been before, and it would remain that way until the end of this run. The second MIPS clip through the 30-star door is a bit easier than the first, but Suiji uses an especially fast method. He jumps into the door and bongs on it, which drops MIPS and pushes Mario inside the door. This time, though, Mario can't stay inside because this door is slightly thinner than the first one. Through Arcane's subframe wall collision nonsense, the wall hitboxes push him out on the other side. Also, since the door he bonked is the same as a wall, he can walk it off of it even though he's now on the other side. When he does, he now faces the inside wall, allowing him to walk it a second time to face forward again. First, what's that? This is called a punch clip, or more accurately, a ceiling down warp. Under normal circumstances, Mario can't enter ceiling hitboxes. When he attempts to move into one, most of the time he doesn't move at all, but if he's underwater, he will move into it and then get pushed out through the bottom of the hitbox. Another particularity of ceilings is that their hitboxes extend infinitely upwards until they are stopped by a floor above them. While floor hitboxes extend a fair amount below the floor itself, this extension is purely vertical. Therefore, if a floor is steep enough, its hitbox will be relatively thin horizontally. This allows Mario to move completely through the floor in one frame, which puts him inside of the ceiling hitbox below. He gets pushed out through the bottom, all the way down in the tunnel. While it is technically possible to clip through swimming normally, using a punch all but guarantees it. Once Mario touches the floor hitbox, he gets put right above it, the best possible position to ensure a clip. If Mario is swimming normally though, that also rotates him parallel to the slope, preventing him from actually going through. In the punching action, Mario doesn't rotate like that, so he keeps moving in the same direction on the next frame and goes through the floor hitbox. The second half of Dire Dire Docks is one of the laggiest places in the entire game. An overwhelming majority of top-level Super Mario 64 speedrunners agree to play on Nintendo 64, and Suiji is no exception. However, the console is more prone to lag than Wii Virtual Console and other emulators, so he puts a large amount of care into using camera angles that reduce the strain on the processor and keep lag to a minimum. This makes movement more awkward than it has to be, but the time save is well worth it. Lag reduction using specific camera angles is used throughout their whole run, but especially in Dire Dire Docks, Bowser in the Fire Sea, and Bowser in the Sky. If the camera angle looks awkward for seemingly no reason, lag is almost always why. There's actually a camera angle that reduces lag even more when Mario jumps up on the submarine, but it only saves a handful of frames at best and it's even more unwieldy than the method Suiji used. The climb on the submarine is already tricky enough as it is. Every Bowser stage is an absolute gauntlet of pure platforming, and Bowser in the Fire Sea is no exception. Nothing particularly stands out, but the run could go south at every single step. What is this magic? This is a rare case of an upwarp. Contrary to popular belief, it has absolutely nothing to do with the pole. It's actually caused by this ceiling and its special property. Mario can hang down from it. At any given point, the game tracks if the ceiling above Mario, if any, is hangable or not, so that Mario knows whether or not to grab it when he jumps into it. But there's one tiny error that throws a wrench in this process. Inside of a frame, the hangable property is updated after collisions are processed. Therefore, when Mario collides with the ceiling, the game checks the hangable property from the previous quarter step. As Mario hits the underside of this wooden piece, he's still considered to be under the hangable ceiling above, so he grabs that ceiling. Suiji immediately lets go by releasing A, which is why Mario falls on the pole, making it look like the pole is involved in some way. The section at the top could be 0.1 seconds faster with better lag reduction, but Suiji opted for a slightly laggier camera angle for safety here.
The way he grabbed Bowser looks slow, but it's intended. It allows him to grab Bowser slightly closer to where he wants to throw him, which saves time on the throw itself. Here the shape of the staircase allows Mario to grab onto the higher floor through the ceiling. It works roughly the same way as we've seen in the lobby. This is another backwards long jump, except this time Mario lands prematurely because he moves onto a higher step of the stairs. It's harder than it looks to get a BLJ this perfectly. Suiji positions himself right at the bottom of the stairs and his long jump pattern is deliberate. He lets two frames go between his first and his second jump, then jumps every other frame. This is required for Mario to stick to the stairs. Before his speed gets higher, Mario needs to jump while he's on the inside half of a step, otherwise he would jump over the stairs instead of landing on the next frame. At the top of the stairs, he has the perfect amount of speed to turn around and go directly where he needs to go next. I can't overstate the mastery required to pull this off consistently. The second time around, two jumps did miss the stairs, which lost him about half a second. But how does the infinite staircase work, and how is he able to skip it with a BLJ? Well, it's actually really simple. There's a trigger zone that warps Mario back down the stairs if he doesn't meet the star requirement. It looks like the stairs are infinite, but move the camera a bit and the magic is dispelled. This zone is 154 units wide and only triggers on every full frame, so it doesn't take that much speed to break it. It is possible to set up the first BLJ slightly faster, but again, it's extremely hard given that so much of the trick is based on precise speed and positioning. Even despite that, the BLJs in this run were among the best ever in a run on world record pace, and in all of his 16 star attempts, Suiji had done faster BLJs than this only 8 times ever, regardless of the pace. He suddenly jumped from being under a second faster than he had ever been up to this point, to 4.5 with only Bowser in the sky to go. His nerves shot through the roof. This has been dubbed Tass Long Jump. It's a shortcut that saves 1.4 seconds over the next fastest strategy, but it requires a pinpoint precise long jump to clear this gap by a hair. Everything matters here, Mario's speed, position, angle, and timing of his jump. This triple jump wall kick works the same way as in Bowser in the Dark World. Mario enters the wall hitbox at the same time as he does the ceiling, and the wall pushes him out first. It's quite difficult, but most top-level runners are consistent at it. The wall kick onto the elevator here is much harder, since the wall is tiny and the trick depends on the elevator cycle. The elevator rotates from the moment the stage is loaded, so Suiji needs to play the whole level at a consistent pace so that the platforms are in the right place when he makes it here. If he had slowed down at any point, he would be at risk of failing to land on the elevator and losing the whole run. This long jump across is incredibly nerve-wracking because this Goomba is infamous for his lack of cooperation with world record pace runs. Luckily, the Goomba left him just enough space to land safely this time. Because of nerves, Suiji's final approach to the pipe was suboptimal, losing him a fraction of a second. Star is dead. In any run on world record pace, the Bowser throws are extremely nerve-wracking. The window to hit Bowser with each throw is generally two frames, although it can vary a bit. 
Most of the time, one of the two frames gives a more direct line than the other frame. Suiji nailed these throws almost perfectly. The second throw was on the second frame, which caused Bowser to bounce and lose a few tenths of a second. Note that it's possible to do these throws half a second faster by spinning this stick about 8 full rotations per second, but Suiji himself stated that he was physically incapable of doing it. Only a small number of people are actually able to pull this off. Once the final throw hits, the hard part is done, but there is still work left. First, Suiji reduces lag by looking away from Bowser. Then he runs to talk to Bowser because text boxes preserve speed. When he gains control again, Mario already has full running speed, allowing him to end the run slightly faster. And with that, he had beaten Super Mario 64 with 16 stars in 14 minutes and 35.5 seconds, a new world record by almost 6 seconds. This run improved his margin over second place to over 15 seconds. That's more than the difference between 2nd and 9th place, as well as the difference between 10th and 30th place. By now, there should be no question that this speedrun is one of the greatest of all time. Strategies so advanced that almost no one else does them, done with a precision and mastery never seen before. Zero mistakes beyond a few microscopic blips, none of which cost more than half a second. As we've seen throughout the run, the room for improvement is incredibly small. About a second and a half on the lobby BLJ. Less than half a second in Bowser in the Dark World. One second in Womp's Fortress, most of which coming from a faster cannonless setup. One second in Shifting Sand Land because of the two tiny mistakes Suiji made. About a second in Lethal Lava Land with faster strategies in avoiding the rim of the volcano. Half a second in Hazy Maze Cave, mostly from when he didn't jump cleanly into the level. About half a second with better lag reduction in Dire Dire Docks and Bowser in the Fire Sea combined. Less than a second with perfect BLJs and a faster setup on the first one. And finally, a second to a second and a half in Bowser in the Sky with tighter execution and faster throws. In total, there's roughly 8 seconds to save that are more or less viable. In 2020, Sir Q Mark 994 made a human theory task of this category using all the most advanced strategies used by real-time runners with perfect execution and got a final time of 1415.95, less than 20 seconds faster than Suiji's run. The fastest task of this category, made by Crack Hex and a large team of contributors, clocks in at 1219.92, but we have yet to see Suiji pull this off in real time. Until the robot overlords take over, this might be the most perfect speedrun of Super Mario 64 we'll ever get to see.